Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nixon Chung from China, Shanghai, actually I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, I've been engaged in a traditional business for 30 years, so I don't want to make my presentation too technical today. Can I? The presentation that I'm going to go over with you is about Tourism Plus. Tourism planning and training and development in the era of new technology and creative economy. To begin with, let us go through some figures about global tourism. From a WTO United Nations report, the, general, the Secretary General's report told everybody that international tourism continues to outpace the global economy. In terms of international arrival, 1.4 billion. And in terms of tourism export, 1.7 trillion. From another report that I gather from World Tourism City Federation, the global tourism economy, including in international travelers and domestic travelers, has actually reached in the year 2018, 12.1 billion an increase of 5%. When it comes to tourism receipt, in the year 2018, it has reached 5.34 billion, up 6.8%. So the global tourism growth, both from IMF and World Bank, has surpassed the forecast of GDP. In terms of regional arrival, as you can see, Asia Pacific still represents one third in the region, and it is over 6% growth year to year. And in terms of revenue, if you add Asia Pacific, Europe, and America together, they constitute 95% of the total global uh, tourist revenue. It's huge. And the growth of developed countries versus emerging economies, it shows very clearly that the emerging economies outperform developed countries in terms of arrival and revenue. Let's look at 10 top destinations in terms of international tourist arrival year 2018. As you can see, there are two countries on the list from Asia in terms of arrival, China and Thailand. And these top 10 destinations receive 40% of worldwide arrivals. When it comes to the revenue, the top 10 tourism earners account for 50% of the total tourism receipts. And amongst the 10 countries, there are three countries in Asia, Thailand, Japan, and China. So look, as you can see in both statistics, Thailand has been very outstanding in terms of tourism developments that all of us get to know. And def definitely, there are some good practices to learn from Thailand. And for tourism investment, consecutively from the year 2000, uh, 2013 to 17, the average growth of investment is 4.2%. And in 2018, it has reached to $964 billion. With that kind of investment, it generates almost 10 times tourism revenue. So that's the report for 2018 in terms of global tourism contribution to social, economic, and social benefits. 6.8% of global GDP, which represents $8.8 .8 trillion. 3.9% growth various GDP growth of 3.2%. The industry employed 10% of the global, represent 10% of the global employment and create three, 390, uh, 390 million jobs. On average, 45% women are being employed. What an achievement, isn't it? So that's why tourism really matters. And it is more than you imagine. Again, Let's follow to look at what is tourism today. Why is that important to us? 
as all the research shows, people are now stopped spending a lot. You know, people are not going to the mall. So that's why shopping mall developers are trying to create experience you know, to attract people back to the mall. But when it comes to tourism, everywhere, whenever you travel, and it's time that people consume. Airline tickets, accommodation, food, entertainment. So tourism is, has become a very important lifestyle of the people of the world. And the role of tourism is very clear. In any emerging uh, economy, tourists, the role of tourism is about reduce poverty with an un un unprecedented sense of responsibility. The new goal of tourism is create, creating a bright future shared by tourism development and mankind. So it's not tourism alone, it's for better mankind in terms of tourism development. However, we still have a lot of challenge to face uh, as, as far as in my 30 years experience. Even though we've been talking about sustainable developed, uh, tourism development, there are still challenges for government, developers, and business to really have a balance on how to protect the environment, maintain cultural integrity, and promote economic benefits. There are still a lot of challenges we are facing nowadays. But the trend is very clear. We are not just developing a scenic spot, build a hotel, or work for travel agents. So the trend of development is really an open system in harmony and close interaction with economic and social development. We need to engage the local community and the residents. We call it host guest sharing model. And last but not the least, the priority is still on environmental protection. Let's look at the consumer. What are their behaviors? The traveler's trend is very similar to ordinary consumer's trend. Number one, travel to change. They go to the local restaurants, they, they, they travel because they want to understand local culture, question authenticity and transformation. And travel to show, Instagram moment. Everywhere we travel, you know, first of all, mobile phone. Take a picture first, post on our social media network, Facebook, Instagram. And there's a tendency of pursuit of healthy life, you know, wellness, travel, uh, sports tourism, hiking. And there's a rise of access economy. Access economy is, is an ecosystem enable people to pay for the access for the benefit of goods rather than the need of owning them, such as Uber, Airbnb. And in entertainment, we have Spotify, Netflix. And in terms of travel pattern, we can see very obviously solo travel. People travel on their own, couples only, no children. And there's also a trend that is multi-generation travel. Three generations travel together. That's what I did every year. I travel with my family uh, to one destination for at least three weeks together. And for sure, there's a rising awareness on sustainability. Uh, climate change, plastics. Just to ask everybody simple questions. Remember when you last travel, how many bottles of plastic bottles have you consumed? This is my second day I traveled to uh, Karachi. You know, I look at my room, six bottles already in my room because I drink water every day. So there's a lot of amount of plastic waste we are generating when people travel. So what's the potential for Pakistan under such positive global tourism uh, results? I don't want to verify how accurate this uh, figure is. The tourism arrival, 1.7 million in 2017. The tourism receipt is 19.4 billion. In a decade's time, WTTs expect Pakistan to 
achieve 36.1 billion. We have e-visa e facilities, 175 countries, and we have visa on arrival for 50 cities. I came here two days ago having visa on arrival in half an hour. And of course, we have the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, uh, and these represent tremendous potential for Pakistani tourism growth. So hopefully by the year, is a part of the Belt and Road Initiative, hopefully by the year of 2030, a lot of these initiatives from energy, infrastructure, railway, are being implemented progressively. And this is the upcoming rail connecting China you know, to Jivanda, a 3,000 kilometer journey. So it's going to bring China and Pakistan much closer. So with all these opportunities in front of us, how do we handle tourism development? What is a new concept of tourism development? I call it Tourism Plus. Let us not be too technical. Let us use both our left brain and our right brain. Tourism Plus, new, I call it new technology. To me, I simply say that they are left brain. It starts with ABC. A lot of these terms we have been talking about in the last uh, day and a half in our summit. You know, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing, and, and, and the last one, VR, AR. Uh, to me, this is the left, left brain process. And let us look at these items. These items has come to this world only for the last 10 years, isn't it? Or even a lot of those are much less. But it seems that changes are happening much rapidly because of them. Let's us use our right brain. What are these items? Art, culture, mobile games, media, movie, the last TV. These items have been with us for ages, for decades. They are our intangible asset. They are our intangible asset. And that is, the, that is part of the things that we need to embrace when we develop tourism. So what is Tourism Plus as a concept? To me, it's a convergence of new technology. I call them new technology because they are just there for the last 10 years. And the creative economy into innovative drivers to create new business model and ecosystem. That is a mindset I would like every tourism developer's government to embrace. Let me give four examples about Tourism Plus engaging technology or intangible asset. When it comes to AI, uh, these are the things that AI can serve the tourism industry. Uh, upgrade human uh, workforce, realize perceived marketing and stream conversion, dampen data analysis, improve customer service. AI application is not to replace human being. Absolutely not. It's to release human being to have more time to create and better serve the customers in terms of giving them the right experience. And VR technology helps to create a new form of experience marketing, simulate and improve tourism experience, and help tourism decision-making process and stimulate people to buy. Uh, like Ali Trip and Tunil, they use VR application on online room reservation. You see the room first before you pay and you book. And it improves the level of sharing tourism experience. So tourism and cross-industry. What do you mean by cross-industry? Traditionally, when we develop tourism, we think tourism alone. But nowadays, tourism development 
is beyond tourism industry. We are talking about building new rural area. Build a hotel connected to the village and to the farmers. The hotel, the farmer, and the village, and the protection of the environment is a unique experience, not just building a hotel alone. New urbanization, new, new town, new dis tourist hub. We talk about energy conservation, connectivity, transportation. Do we have subway when we have tons, tons of tourists coming to uh, the destination? This is the challenge of Bangkok and Thailand is going to face. When you imagine we can drive by bus from China to Bangkok. So you can imagine how many people will come to Bangkok. What will Bangkok become when tons of tons of tourists are going to Bangkok? So new form of urbanization will occur in Bangkok to cope with this change. And we have new format of traveling, such as leisure agriculture, health tourism, silver age tourism, multi-generation tourism, study tourism, and in Pakistan, I see you have sports tourism, wildlife, mountain, beach, and cultural tourism. So people travel now for a purpose or multiple purposes. We don't go to just for sightseeing. We go to travel for a purpose, or even when we travel, we bring our families to together. So we need to have activities uh, to let the family enjoy as well. So tourism on protection and innovation of traditional cultures. Uh, in this room, I think some of you have joined the uh, dinner last evening. It has been a cultural event, you know, I think it lasts until 11 p.m. You know, the opera show, the local music, you know, these are the traditional culture, way of production and living, festival handicraft. These are all are called intangible assets. How do we protect them? How do we make innovation out of it? And I'd like to share with you a project that I've been doing from the year 2013. I call it In Love with China. What does that mean? is using the Chinese tradition elements and engage the global designers to design and produce tourism souvenirs for consumers. It's a platform engaging international designers and Chinese traditional cultural elements in, in terms of design. And all these products are meant to appeal to the millennials the younger generation. So I'd like to share more of this project if anybody in this room is interested. And I would also like to see anybody in this room who are well-versed in, in new technology. How could you guys help us to take this project to the next stage uh, in applying the new technology? But we have a big challenge ahead of us, even though these potentials are in front of us. What I do? What is the challenge? I think we have a problem with tourism education. We do. Uh, I study in a hotel school in Hong Kong, Hong Kong Polytechnic University, which is the number one school in Asia and in the real ranking almost top three. So it's a very it's a research based school, and we find that. We now, in terms of tourism education, we have to focus on developing creativity, critical thinking, human relations, philosophy, entrepreneurship, and art. Not just by teaching tourism people how to surf, how to use a play, how to surf from the right or to the left. And the curriculum needs to improve future in the curriculum. The young people need to think what the future is going to be. And they have to teach alternative visions on future, foresight, and the ability to assess potential futures. As all the new technology is going to change the world, young generation in the tourism curriculum need to include that kind of programs to make them prepare 
for the work in the future as well. And we need to promote lifetime learning, lifetime learning by making online programs free everywhere. And we need to teach new skills, not profession. We should not be teaching how to be a waiter or how to be a manager. Yeah, I think new skills need to be taught. So what is our future workforce? That's a challenge. Are we being served by robots or by human beings? Or do you like to be served by robots instead of a human being? Or both? So the mentality is, can I serve you? Are we teaching the younger generation to serve or to create? And this is what tourism education needs to look into. To serve or to create. So for Pakistan tourism development, embrace tourism plus sustainability, inclusive tourism definitely is according to um, United Nations initiative. In terms of leadership, what I would propose is very simple. On leadership in tourism development, building friendship, boost people's cultural knowledge, promote people-to-people -people contact, especially the young people. Let the younger generation know each other, exchange because they are the future travelers. And we involve tourism education, create innovative tourism products and experiences. I'm sure with the vision of the government 2025, Pakistan is in a position to have innovative travel experiences. There are some fruitful thoughts on how that could be created. That could be created from your art, culture, and heritage, your ecosystem using the latest technology, the handicraft that you have, beautiful, isn't it? I like to own a piece. The mountain tourism, uh, Pakistan's beauty and splendor. Beach tourism, your sports. These are not technical at all. But the important thing is, what is your story? I th this is my first trip coming to Pakistan and to this city. I think Pakistan is really under-promoted in terms of tourism, really under-promoted. Nobody knows your country. Of course, you have people coming here for a purpose. In this hotel, the reason why I come is because of the summit. And I see a lot of friends in, from China. They're coming here because there is an exhibition. But are there any people coming for other purposes? I think the Pakistan tourism is really underdeveloped. For those travelers, internet travelers, do you know 40% of soccer balls are being produced in a single city? In Pakistan, do you know which one? This is the first time I know. This is the city. How, does, how do we say that in Pakistan? Shalko. I have, I have not been there, but I would love to. So to end up my presentation, I will give you a scenario that I would love to come back to Pakistan again. Under such a scenario. I call it a 3,000 kilometer golden tourism route from Kasa to Jiwanda. This um, 3,000 journey will, be, will happen as such. Number one, I use my AR lens to discover and plan for my trip. Where should I go? What will I see first? And I take my families along. I take my family along with a new energy RV. I drive here. Of course, I have to change seats, not from right to the left. I go to 
your tourist destination, there is offline and online shopping. There are traditional music associated with each destination. There are robots telling us things to do. There are Wi-Fi anywhere. If not, you know, we have to use Henry's technology. And then we have mobile payment or crypto payment. That is the good reason why I would like to come back to Pakistan again. So to end my remarks for Pakistan tourism, create a possibility, tell your own story, and the last but not the least, engaging the young generation. Thank you.